This tiny computer is the Mars CM. It's the exact same size and shape as the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. It should be a drop-in replacement. And on its box, it says it supports 4K, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi, and has gigabit Ethernet. It's also supposed to have PCI Express. Why is this thing important? Well, right now at least, it's still hard to buy compute modules. There are tons of really cool projects that use them. Like, you can build a portable game console that runs all kinds of retro games. Or you could build a custom astrophotography camera to track the sun. There are tons of projects out there that use a compute module. But, like I said, it's hard to find one. Could you just drop a Mars CM in its place? That's the hope. I mean, Feldspatten got his working on a Turing Pi 2 cluster board. So if you have a CM4 board and can't find a CM4 for it, maybe this is an option. I actually tested the same processor the Mars CM uses, this JH7110, on the Star 5 Vision 5 II. And it's not a bad little processor, it just has some growing pains. Make sure to watch that video if you want more background on RISC-V and the JH7110 specifically. But this video is about the Mars CM, how it runs, and how well it can run as a replacement for a Compute Module 4. I bought this board for $54 bucks plus $12 shipping on a race, or a race, or a race, or however you say that, and I bought the model with 4 gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of built-in eMMC storage right here on the back. It came in a plastic case wrapped inside an anti-static bag, all enclosed in this box, and it looks like they left a little handwritten label on top, 14. I'm not sure if that's like a serial number or what, but let's pop this thing on a Compute Module 4 I.O. board. After I plugged in power, the little green light started flashing. Two blinks every other second. But no HDMI output. Maybe I needed to download an OS. I mean, that would make sense, right? So I went to the URL on the side of the box, and, well, I guess I'm one of the first people to get one of these things, because the page for it isn't even up yet. So I browsed around, and they already have a plain old Mars, so I went to that board's getting started guide, and I downloaded the release of Debian. It looks like it's based on the Vision 5 image, so hopefully it works out of the box. I flashed it to a microSD card with Etcher, stuck the card into the Compute Module 4 I.O. board, and rebooted, and... Well, the same thing happened. Now, on the Pi Compute Module, if you have an eMMC module, the microSD card is ignored completely, so that might be the case here too. But seeing as the only page that was visible in the docs was an intro page, I decided to head over to the Milk 5 community forums and see if anyone else had the same problem I did. And it turns out the Compute Module subform was completely empty. So I did what any good noob would do and started a new topic, asking how to get this thing going. I also started a new issue in my SBC Reviews repo to track my work. And luckily, I wound up trying out Serial Console Access. I have this little USB to UART adapter, and following the Mars documentation, I just crossed my fingers and hoped the GPIO pinout was the same. And luckily, it was. I launched cool term and watched the serial output. It looks like it uses the default password milkv for the root user, and now that I'm logged in, I grabbed the IP and tried to SSH in. Unfortunately, the default SSH config is a bit too secure for that, so I had to run these two commands over serial console to make it so that I could log in over SSH, and once I did that, I was finally in. Apt gave me a few issues installing things initially, but here's the NeoFetch output. These are the basic specs of the board in Linux. I started compiling all this data into my SBC reviews repo, so go check that out if you want all the gory details. I only cover the top level stuff in these videos. Before I benchmarked the CPU, I wanted to see if the PCI Express interface worked at all. And it does. I was able to get this Kyoxia SSD running without any tweaking. It reports as PCIe Gen 2, so it could in theory get 400 megabytes per second. But in this case, all I could get was 150 to 250 megabytes per second, same as the Vision 5 II. So it's nice to have working PCIe, but it's limited a bit by this processor. But to test the processor's general performance, I ran Geekbench. It runs on ARM, x86, and even RISC-V in preview, so I downloaded it, but then I couldn't expand it. The default OS image only gives you 4 gigs of disk space, so I had to follow this process to recreate the disk partition and expand it with a utility called Resize2FS. It's a little nerve-wracking, even if you've done a lot of command line disk partitioning stuff before. Hopefully they can get automatic disk resizing working like Raspberry Pi does and other SPC vendors. I also was glancing around on the Vision 5 II site, and it looks like it might not be a good idea to upgrade the system, at least for the Vision 5. That same advice probably also applies to the Mars CM2 for now. I mean, 
I get it, it's early days for RISC V, but when I read documentation and it says don't update, that does raise a few alarm bells. But getting back to Geekbench, I could finally run it. It took a very long time, but here's the result. 74 single core and 219 multi. That's not amazing. And it illustrates two things. One, that some of the tests that Geekbench uses are not quite optimized for RISC V. And two, even with those optimizations, this CPU is just a lot slower than even older high-performance ARM cores. The Raspberry Pi 4 is three times faster, and the brand new Pi 5 is nearly seven times faster. And it's not just Geekbench. I ran my top 500 Linpack benchmark, and the Marcium gets just two gigaflops, the Pi 4 gets 12, and the Pi 5, 30. I ran a bunch of other benchmarks too, and I also measured power consumption. And this isn't a terrible little SBC, but it's far from efficient compared to any modern ARM processor. For Linpack, the half gigaflop per watt rating is at the bottom of my list, compared to more modern rock chip boards getting over four gigaflops per watt. At idle, the Marcium only pulls down like one watt though, so that's not too bad. And the built-in networking puts out about a gigabit, so that's good too. But the EMMC interface is a little slow, maxing out around 45 megabytes per second. That puts it in the ballpark of the Pi 4 at least, but the Ethernet connection doesn't support PTP timestamping like the CM4, so it's not quite as flexible. Plus, I couldn't get Wi-Fi to work at all despite attempts to get a connection to any of my four test Wi-Fi networks. It's probably a matter of the OS image just not being complete yet, so depending on when you watch this video, Wi-Fi might be working. Now, RISC-V is very cool. I love seeing this new hardware. And the fact that the base architecture is open is great. But there are a lot of people who are a bit optimistic about where we are today. I've gotten comments saying ARM is dead in the water, or that RISC-V will take over in five years because it's so open. That's just not true. Discounting the fact that there are only a few decently fast RISC-V designs on the market, and the price to performance is just not there yet, individual chip designs still require licensing. It's not like if someone made a Zen 4 RISC-V core, every other chip maker could just pump it out for free. So while RISC-V is more open, it's just not a totally open hardware ecosystem. So it won't win by default. It has to win, like all technology does, by solving problems. And right now, for tiny microcontrollers or disk controllers or things like that, it can and it is. But in terms of this thing being a Compute Module 4 killer, well, the fact that it's still hard to find CM4s, even while Raspberry Pi is cranking out thousands every week, speaks volumes. And there are plenty of ARM competitors to fill the niche of not Raspberry Pi compute modules like the Pine64 So Quartz, the Radsa CM3, or the Banana Pi CM4, all of which I've tested before on this channel. This is a very cool little board. I love that it already works so well, and that it includes PCI Express built-in. But is it a replacement for the Raspberry Pi? No. It doesn't do hardware PTP timestamping, it isn't compatible with as much software, it doesn't have all the same I.O. interfaces, and it's pretty slow. But that doesn't mean I don't like it. If you're interested in getting into a new architecture, or if you just need a computer to throw onto a compute module board, it's certainly worth checking out. But just like I mentioned in my Vision 5.2 review, this isn't meant for a typical user. That'll come in a generation or two, but right now, RISC-V isn't quite mainstream enough for the average SBC hobbyist or maker. Now, the Milk 5 Pioneer? That's a 64-core RISC-V monster. I don't have one, but what do you think? Is it worth checking out? Let me know in the comments. There was no sponsor on this video, so thank you so much to all my patrons and sponsors who make this testing possible. And you let me work on cool projects like testing another Mars machine, this time a Mars 400 ARM storage cluster. Subscribe for that. Also check out this other video that YouTube thinks you'll like. Until next time, I'm Jeff Kierling.